Hi, it's Mrs. Leganke here with your Unit 6 Study Guide, Associations in Data. Part 1 is on scatter plots and associations. The table below shows the relationship between the number of absences a student has had this semester and their score on the mid-year science test. We're going to make a scatter plot to show this data. Um, looking at the data table, our absences would go on the x-axis, as labeled here, and our scores would go on the y-axis, labeled here. So I'm going to plot this data over 3. Now notice it's skip counting by 2s, so 3 would be in the middle. Over 3 up to 90, put a point. Over 11 up to 65, so that one's going to hover right in the middle there. Over 8 up 80, over 2, and up 95, over 4, and up 85, over 9, up to 60, over 6, up 75, over 5, and up to 90. Okay, so there's our data. In looking at our data, we have to now determine, the second part, does this um, scatter plot show a positive, negative, or no association? Um, when I'm looking at this data, it does appear that there is a, a decreasing trend here. So we would call that a negative association. Okay, next we're going to look at this data that's shown. We don't have any labels, but we can see, uh, again, that this data is decreasing. Um, you know, it looks like it's descending or decreasing. So let's look at our choices. Um, which of the statements are true for the scatter plot? This scatter plot shows some outliers. Um, outliers would be like random points outside of the data. I do not see any outliers. The scatter plot shows a positive association. No way. A positive would be increasing data. Uh, the scatter plot shows a linear association. Uh, seems like, yes, it's all trending downward, kind of in a line, so that'd be linear. And um, the scatter plot shows nonlinear, so we would say no there. And then the last one says the scatter plot shows a negative association, and yes, because the data is decreasing, that is a negative association. So we circle that last one as well. Okay, um, same question as the last one. Looking at this data, I can see right away it's kind of sporadic. It's all spread apart kind of randomly. So uh, knowing that, let's look for the true statements. Does it show a negative association? Is it all decreasing? Not, not really, like it kind of seems like it is, but it's kind of scattered, so it's not completely negative. It's definitely not increasing either. Um, I'm going to go with this one. It's showing no association. There's no line. There's no pattern going on here. I also don't see any curves in the data, so um, it's not linear or nonlinear. There's just it's just spread around. So just no association. Okay, moving on to two-way tables and uh, frequency tables. We have um, someone who teaches math at Pinedale Middle School, and she asked 40 of her students whether they per prefer to take notes on lined paper or graph paper, and this table shows the results. So first, we're going to complete the table. So we do have the grand total here, and we know that 91 plus 21 equals 40, so that's all set. Um, let's use what we know to find out what we don't know. So this this way um, going this way 10 plus what is 19 that's going to be a 9 in here because 10 plus 9 is 19. Uh, now I'm going to look maybe this way 9 plus 7 would give me a total of 16. Okay and now to fill in the missing pieces uh, that are left here we have to figure out what plus 7 would give us 21 so I could do 21 minus 7 to get that. So that is going to be 14. And then the same thing here. What plus 16 is 40? So if I do 40 minus 16, 
I can get that answer, which is 24. Okay, so complete the table. Either you're either using addition or subtraction to do that. Now we can answer the question. How many more boys than girls did Ms. Nother survey? So how many more boys than girls? That would be right in here. So 24 boys and 16 girls. So how many more boys compared to girls? So 25 minus 16 is eight. So eight more boys were surveyed when compared to the girls because 24 boys were, su were surveyed and 16 girls were surveyed. And then we have to do what's called relative frequency. So that is the part over the total. So we want to know um, what is the relative frequency of people that prefer to take notes on graph paper that are girls. So I need to find that information on the table. So I'm looking here, I see that seven of them are girls. So people that prefer to take notes on graph paper who are girls. So we have 21 people who prefer to take notes on graph paper and seven are girls. So seven out of 21. So, um, and we're gonna round to the tenths place. So that's a hint that we're going to be doing some division here. So I'm grabbing my calculator, I'm gonna do seven divided by 21, and I get 0 0.3333, it's going to repeat. It said to round to the tenths place, so that would be one place past the decimal. Our answer would be 0 0.3. Now you may sometimes be asked to express your answer as a percent, so you would just then continue with, you would do seven divided by 21 to get the decimal, and then you multiply that by 100, that would give you the percent. So this would also be known as 33% of the people would prefer to take notes on graph paper. Okay, next we're gonna look at, look at and read carefully here. It says, in a poll, 50 residents in Greenville and Fairfield were asked whether they prefer swimming or jogging for exercise. The table shows the frequencies, the relative frequencies in the survey, so it shows that decimal response, that part over the total. Um, so this represents here the 50 people, the whole amount, one whole amount of 50 people. And then we have our locations and swimming and jogging up here. So it's really important you read it, study all the labels and everything. Okay, so let's look at our questions. Most, the first one says that most residents of Greenville prefer jogging over swimming. So I go to Greenville and I look for jogging and swimming and this number is bigger than the swimming so I would say yes for this one or you could circle that one. So that is correct. Okay. Um, people who prefer jogging are more likely to be from Fairfield. Okay, so let's see. If you prefer jogging, you're from Fairfield. Well, look at jogging is a 0 0.20 compared to 0.38. It says most people, the bigger number is from Greenville. This says they per, they're from Fairfield, so that's no. Um, there is an association between a, the town of per, the town a person lives in and the exercise they prefer, or there's no association between the town and their exercise. So let's think about that. So I'm looking up here at Greenville, and I'm looking at their data to compare jogging versus swimming. So in Greenville. A lot more people like jogging compared to swimming. So, you know, that could be an association between where they live. Um, one thing I'm thinking is maybe there's not many swimming pools available, so more people, uh, you know, choose to go jogging. And that would be an association because that's based on, like, where they live and their preference. So because of that, let's go ahead and circle that and say 
yes, there is an association between where a person lives and their exercise preference. When I look down at Fairfield, you know, these are a bit closer. It looks like there's more of a preference for swimming for the people who live in Fairfield, um, even though that data is closer. But back up to the Greenville data, there's definitely more joggers than swimmers, so it, it seems to be a preference there. Okay. Okay, and that concludes your Chapter 6 review.